and welcome to another episode of In The Air. Today, as you can see, we are at the Dallas Fort Worth Airport. Well, not in, we're outside. Randy made me a new mask. Pretty cool. Flying during COVID times. Wish me luck. Let's get going. Air travel has really plummeted in the last few months, and you can see it right off the bat. Things just aren't the same. DFW is normally packed, but there were very few cars in the parking garage and dropping off passengers at the E-Terminal today. I always check in for my flights on whichever airlines app I'm flying with, so today I'll ask airlines. So I immediately headed to security, since I'm not going to need to check any luggage today. These signs are placed six feet apart throughout the security line. Passengers didn't do so hot at standing here. There are a lot of restaurants and stores closed around the airport, so these signs are seen far too often. However, there are still some things open, like the gameway here at the E-Terminal. I've mentioned this company a few times before in past videos while flying out of DFW. If you'd like more information, I'll add those videos in the description box below. My favorite restaurant is closed. I knew that ahead of time, but it really is a bummer to not get the delicious burger and fries from the Love Shack before my flight. I sure hope it opens back up soon. Delta has a Sky Club lounge next to gate E11. As with most lounges around the country, it was still closed. Speaking of Delta, I mean, I've got to plug the videos when we flew on Delta's newest airplane and my very favorite airplane flying today, the Airbus A220. Check out those videos to see why it's such a game-changing airplane. Passengers started gathering at the gate like normal, so the boarding process really wasn't too different. Although wearing masks was a requirement, you can see not everyone was wearing theirs. There's a lot of signage all over the airport regarding COVID-19. What different times we're living in today. Okay, they said that we're gonna board from the back of the plane forward and being in row seven, that means I'm gonna be the second to last row um, of the main cabin to board since I'm in premium economy. So I will be waiting here for a little bit. Oh, I just thought of another major concern that I have. My other itinerary flying back tomorrow, I received a notification Actually, I didn't even receive a notification. I opened up Alaska's app and it said that my flight has changed either for tomorrow's flight or the one on the 11th. And I have no idea which one it is. It says that I have to call them in order to get it fixed. That makes me a little nervous. I don't know about you. And here's today's aircraft, the beautiful N268AK, a three and a half year old Boeing 737-900ER. Alaska sure has one of my very favorite liveries. What's your favorite livery? Drop a comment below. Premium Economy actually got to board just after first class, so I'm getting to board a little earlier than I thought. What can I say? I love being on the inside of the plane as long as I can. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. If you are, please give a like below and consider subscribing to the channel. When you ring the bell, you'll get notified when we upload new videos. Here we go. I always get so excited to take my first step onto the airplane, and I love that Alaska welcomes you aboard. They really do think of everything. As soon as I turned the corner, I was without a doubt on an Alaska 737. The first four rows of first class with their big, soft, and very comfortable seats, I might add. The native Alaska design on the little bulkhead between first class and the main cabin, as well as the blue mood lighting are just some ways that Alaska Airlines is a very special airline. Here's my seat for the four hour trek up to Seattle. 7F. Two windows. Winning! Well, I fly back in row 8 and I'll explain why row 8 is even better. At 35 inches of pitch, that's one of the biggest reasons I like the premium economy seat with Alaska. Granted, I'm not tall at all, but for a four hour flight, I appreciate the extra legroom. A very standard tray table is provided. I just gotta say, I really dig the Alaska vibe, something the newer interior won't provide. Granted, it's nice too. Hint, 
Stay tuned for future videos. Although the seats are a little on the thin side, I find them pretty comfortable and the headrests are a big plus. Everything has gone as well as I could expect from both the DFW Airport and Alaska Airlines so far today, until the APU was inoperable on this aircraft, which powers a lot of the systems while parked at the gate. What did this mean for us passengers? It was very warm in the plane throughout boarding. It was nearly 100 degrees and the sun was beating on us something fierce. Oh well, we can't expect perfection. Not during these times, or ever really. I mean, I'm still in a clean Alaska Airlines 737 with the middle seat open in row 7, about to be in the air with stunning views to come. What do I really have to complain about? Oh hello there Spirit! I flew with Spirit Airlines last year as well as low budget competitors and compared them. I'll add those videos in the description box below too. Give them a watch! And my very favorite part of flying, the takeoff. There's some weather in the distance so the takeoff was a little bumpy. Enjoy the views! We took off from runway 17R heading south. We turned west pretty quick to start heading toward the northwest and things smoothened out for a bit before getting to the Rockies, where it is inevitably a bit choppy. You'll see what the captain and first officer were trying to dodge today in a little bit. Now to service. The premium economy service with Alaska Airlines usually provides passengers with a snack, choice of alcoholic beverage, and first dibs on purchasing their delicious food. Today, not so much. We were given the option of a small can of Coke, Diet Coke, and water, as well as this tiny savory mix, they called it. This is easily the most disappointing snack and service I've received from Alaska. It wasn't very good or satisfying. I didn't even get Biscoff cookies. No worries. Brandy packed me up some since we were prepared for this lack of service. The dark mood lighting Alaska provides didn't exactly cover up the not terribly clean lavatory I stepped into. I sure hope the other two restrooms in the back were cleaner than this one. Of course, I'm wearing one of my Avgeek t-shirts, and who wouldn't want an in-the-air mask? If you'd be interested in one or any other possible merch, drop a comment, we'd love to hear from you. It sure is hard to make the walk back to my seat smooth. I love the newer overhead space bins on the 737s. The cabin feels so much more roomy than the A320 series competitors. Looking out my window and getting to see the Rocky Mountains never gets old. Who needs in-flight entertainment when you get great views like these? Although today was a little different as there were often a lot of clouds blocking the great views. Speaking of, this is the large thunderstorm Colorado Springs was enjoying. At least I was enjoying the spectacular views these clouds were providing. There was a lot of weather to avoid. Straddling the border of Utah and Idaho is the beautiful Bear Lake. We flew right over this stunning lake. The other side of the aircraft would have been looking at the Great Salt Lake. Maybe I chose the wrong side of the airplane today. Oops. The big reason I choose the right side of the aircraft every flight into Seattle is the usual amazing approach with views of the Seattle skyline, Puget Sound, and sports stadiums. Not today. We approached from the south, which was okay to me, because I got to see the views of some areas that I almost never see while in the air, parts of town that I used to live and frequent for many years.
another smooth landing by the amazing professionals who fly millions of passengers around the world every day. First off, I must say how grateful I am to everyone who works in the aviation industry today. From the pilots, flight attendants, maintenance and ground crews, and the list goes on. We feel your pain. We are with you. We pray for the healing of not only our country, but the world. To get through this crazy time as fast as possible, so those of you who are not working right now can get back to work as soon as possible. My friends Doug and Drew over at the Next Trip podcast started a movement, hashtag Aviation Tough. Stay just that, Aviation Tough. We need you, so keep holding on to your dreams of being a part of this amazing industry. Okay, now to today's flight. Sorry, I get a little carried away sometimes. The service was a bummer, but I knew that going in. The additional services the passengers sitting in premium economy usually get are simply not there today. It was not worth the 70 something dollars that I spent on the upgrade. It just kinda is what it is, and I knew that, so I came prepared with my own bottle of water and plenty of snacks. I still love the in-flight entertainment choices, the in-seat power, and the vibe Alaska provides. As the aviation industry starts to recover, I'm sure services will start returning. I noticed far too many passengers not wearing their masks while on board the aircraft. If you are going to fly, please wear your mask while you're not eating or drinking. We need this country to recover from the virus as quickly as possible, so please be responsible. Lives are counting on you to be responsible. I made it to Seattle, and although this wasn't a normal flight, I was grateful to fly again. Thank you, Alaska, for giving me the opportunity. Well, I made it to Seattle. It looks pretty quiet here, but I'm gonna go ahead and head over to the shuttle area for my hotel. Um, it was a good flight. It was bumpy. My mask is all crooked. The uh, flight was bumpy, but there, I mean, there's only so much they can do about that. And there really wasn't much service. Got like one little snack, and a water. I mean, save your money on a premium economy upgrade. Right now, that's for sure. Not necessary, but anyway, remember to be a blessing both in the air and on the ground. We'll see you again soon in the air.